Ahoy, Steven Tabor! We're taking over the ship! Once I lived a life a millionaire Hello there, I'm Muriel. And I'm Brian. Welcome to the channel. It was before we met, I was flying across the ocean on my concert tours, and Brian was sailing across it on his Grampian 30 sailboat. So now we're inviting you to join us. Yeah, come along as we go to some interesting places and work up Muriel's sailing skills to a point where she might consider a crossing. Maybe, maybe, and maybe work up Brian's musician skills, so maybe he'll join me on stage, or at least hanging out backstage with some of my cool musician friends. Oh, and she's got some friends. Grab a cup of coffee, grab your significant other, and join us for some great moments. After taking in this foggy morning scene and doing a few boat chores, we next went up to meet the person who was graciously allowing us to stay at his dock in Gordon Box spot. His name is Jim Sharp, and as far as we knew, he was merely the owner of this charming little museum. Where do I comb my hair? Okay. Plus your quarter. Turns out he was a famous captain in the Windjammer fleet and owned the adventure of the Roseway and the Bowden and enough other boats to start a small navy. We had no idea the legend we were standing next to and only learned of it days later when we got a chance to read his book. We then got a ride to the home of Dylan Buston, a folklorist, singer, songwriter, filmmaker, and playwright. He was hosting a gathering that was essentially a stand-in for the cancelled Sweet Chariot Music Festival, normally hosted by Doug Day on Swans Island. Doug's son Jackson was there. as well as guitar builder Nicholas Apollonio. What in heaven's name have you done? Broken the speed of the sun of loneliness. You're out there running just to be on the run. Far, they say, is just to fight. Unless one sails a boat. The sprit spar keeps the gaff rig tight, a luffing antidote. <laughs> a luff's a type of pulley fall, unless one sails a boat. Then luffing canvas seems a call to tack or trim a moat. After a few morning chores, we took a walk down the coastal road in Rockland. As a truck went by, I heard my name called. It was Bill Froelich, a guy that lived just a few houses away from me back at Little Oak Beach, New York. I get the sense this happens a lot to sailors, and if this has happened to you, if you've met somebody you know in some obscure, unlikely little place, leave a comment below. Captain Jim has a little music jam at the museum every Sunday that we caught a bit of before making our way back to the boat. Hurricane Isaias was barreling up the coast and we needed to find a less exposed place to hide from it. I only hope we can get back here and spend some time with Jim and talk at length about his wonderful career. After saying goodbye to Captain Jim Sharp, our next stop was finally meeting Gordon Bach. Hi Gordon. See you. Good to see you. The only way to study guitar in college was to study classical. So. If I took students, I think the first thing I would tell them is go take a few classical lessons. Mm -hmm. So from the west side of Penobscot Bay here at Rockland, we made the short three mile hop over to Vinyl Haven and a great hurricane hole called Long Cove. But Long Cove was so full that instead of anchoring here, we anchored outside here by Turnip Island.
Well, we found Brian's little secret hiding hole here, uh, and for the to anchor for the evening. But another boat found it before us, so we have company here. It happens to be a schooner from the 1800s. Yeah. Stephen Tabor, the uh, one of the wind jammers out of Camden. But nice company. Yeah, good company. So <laughs> a scenic view in a different way. That's right. Stephen Tabor was built on Long Island, New York in 1871 as a coastal trading schooner. In 1946, she was adopted for the windjammer trade and has been added steadily except for two years in the early 80s. After looking at the Tabor for a long while, we decided to channel our best Blackbeard the Pirate and see if we could board the ship. You gonna be set to go there, boarding party? Hi, Stephen Tabor. Which one is the captain? I am. We're taking over the ship. Excellent. I'll get a day off. Look, Mario, they're raising their boats in terror. Okay, you're relieved, Captain. We'll take it from here. I'm Noah. Captain Noah was a good sport, and he could clearly tell that we were just pirate wannabes from that harmless little boat next door. Ah, what are you keeping the barrels, Captain? Uh, that's just our water supply. Oh, that's a lot less exciting than I was imagining. Well, this is a little peace offering. After all, we did take over your ship and all. Just rode over to the Tabor and spoke to the Captain Noah. And uh, sadly, they're leaving. They're due back in port. But he assured me this is a great spot for the storm. And uh, so I feel good about that at least. Sorry to see him go. That's how you pick up an anchor on a wind jammer. The 
this Steven Tabor, by the way, has no engine and is being pushed here by the yaw boat in the back. When the fog lifted, I noticed a few boats leaving Long Cove, so I decided to row in and look around. Turns out there was an empty mooring which a neighboring boat owner said was available, so we decided to pick up anchor and motor in and take it. Turns out this mooring was constructed using a 7,000 pound block of concrete, so it seemed as though we would now be able to spend a night not sweating the anchor during any storm. While Brian was off exploring, we had a little company right by the boat. The school of fish gave the seal a fun way to get lunch. I hope he stays around until Brian gets back. Oh yeah, where is he? He's uh, right out this way. First, you have to row a little boat. It was so beautiful and calm and still. I just had to stop and soak it in for a little while. This must be the calm before the storm. It's just beautiful. Still, just a little breeze. Clear sun, it's like September. And here she is. Looking much more professional. Let it go. Good, got signal. Yeah? Good. What are you reading? This is, with Reckless Abandon, um, Captain Jim Sharp's book. The one that we picked up in uh, Rockland at the sea the Steam Sail and Power Museum. And uh, it's a good read, I'm enjoying it. And right here I'm getting to the part where he's buying the Stefan Tabor, the boat that we boarded and took command of last night. Oh wow, how interesting. Yeah. When she returned, we rode together over to the side cove. The satellite image just doesn't do it justice. When we got back, I went hunting for something I'd found here years ago. Well, I've just been searching around in here for uh, some mussels. I got them. Nice little mess, two dozen, not bad. And so we spent the day waiting for Isaias to arrive. Every drop of rain, every scuff of wind on the water, every scudding cloud seemed to portend ominous things. More boats piled into Long Cove. And the rain has started outside. Inside, we are snug oh, as bugs. Cozy. Yes. And what are you cooking? Zucchini that David Eisenberg gave us from his garden. And I'm whiling away the time with a margarita. Uh, well, you know, the 
time has to be wild away somehow. Okay, a little quinoa. We enjoyed this bruschetta on toast the other day, and so I it could have a second life here. Ah, yes. Here we are, hiding under the edge of the dodger as the rain starts. Yes, even though it's warm and cozy inside, and cool and blustery outside, here we are. <laughs> Old habits die hard. Contrast. We like to, we like to eat outside. And though it did rain a bit and the wind got up a little, the storm just disintegrated. It never arrived. But no matter, we had a cozy, lovely evening aboard. If you're enjoying our content, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and bell buttons. It really helps us. Thanks.